What is up, Go players? Welcome to episode four of the Beginner Go series. Um, if you are new and are just popping uh, in, and this is the first part of the series you've watched, I definitely recommend, if you're a beginner, um, to go back and watch episodes um, definitely two and three. Um, but if you don't know any of the rules, watch episode one. Uh, episode one goes through the rules. Two and three are principles that I think are very important for a beginner to understand. So definitely check those out first, because um, we're going to be using those videos in this lesson. So in the last episode, I showed you guys some good shapes to move your stones. If you have a stone here and you want to move this stone, I showed you the different options. Um, the one space jump, the two space jump, the knight's move, small knight, and the large knight. But today, I am going to get into some a little bit more exciting stuff. Stuff that I think a lot of people sort of want to know, which is how to fight. Um, so, just like in martial arts, if you want to learn how to fight, you're going to have to learn how to punch and how to kick first. The two, uh, essentially, most basic uh, attacks uh, in Go uh, are called ladders and nets, and they pop up everywhere. Um, a lot of times they're not realized because the players know that the ladder is there and so they don't play in such a way to invite the ladder or the net. Um, but you see it all the time in games. Uh, in fact, a book called uh, Lessons in the Fundamentals of Go, uh, Ladders and Nets are the first two chapters in that book. It's very essential and I think it's definitely something that can build off of the lessons that we learned uh, so far. So without further ado, let's get started. Right, so let's start with ladders. Um, they're a little bit more simple. So this white stone um, uh, is right up against these two black stones. You can sort of tell that it looks pretty weak. Now, first question right off the bat. There is a move that will unconditionally capture this white stone. Unconditionally meaning there is nothing white can play such that it will live unless black makes a mistake further down the line. But there is a move that will capture this uh, without any questions. Uh, can you guys find it? Um, if you know about ladders, then you immediately know what move I'm talking about. But if you've never known what, if you don't know what a ladder is, uh, you might have to think about it a little bit. So if you've thought about it, pause the video, try to see what you could do. The correct answer right here. This move unconditionally captures this white stone. If you've never seen what a ladder is, you might be like, well, white can just like come out, can you? Well, white could, but when black plays here, he's an Atari again. Notice that liberty right there, right? Only one liberty left for this group, which means white has no choice but to keep going down. Black can just do that again. And now he's still at one liberty. White goes over, black goes over, black goes over, black goes over. If you've ever watched the anime Hikaru no Go, this was like the thing that the teacher first showed Hikaru when he was trying to learn to play. Um, bottom line is he'll keep atari these stones. And notice black, white can't do anything else. If white tries to Atari these stones, black will capture the entire lot by just playing there because every move is an Atari. So white's forced to just go to the edge of board and be captured. So that move and the sequence is what's called a ladder. And it all starts with this move in this formation right here. You might think that's kind of a weird, a very specific circumstance, but actually happens all the time. Um, and a lot of times the ladders are threatened so that you know not to play there. And so your stones are safe because of it. But more on that a little bit later. Let's try a little bit difficult, more difficult of a problem. All right, problem number two. Uh, does the ladder work? We know that this is the move, right? That I showed you before that would capture this white stone, but does it work this time? The answer is it actually doesn't. Uh, this ladder is what's called a broken ladder. And I'll show you why. Because if black plays here, okay. So if black plays here, white tries to escape, 
we get this same sequence, right? But look what ends up happening. Black runs white into his own stone, which means that now white got an extra one, two, three liberties from that, which means there's nothing black can do to put this in Atari, which means immediately white can double Atari anywhere. He can play here, he can double Atari these two stones, and whichever one black saves, he takes. He can even just forget about it and do this and connect up with these stones and let black worry about it. Black tries to defend two at once, well, he's got these. Or play here. That also captures these two stones. And so this ladder is very powerful, but it leaves cutting points all along black's position, which is why they're tricky. If you see that white stones are going to run into another white stone, this ladder will not work. You can't capture the stone this way. So that's what sort of makes ladders a little bit challenging. Um, you've got to sort of read with your head, you know, over, down, over, down, over, down, over, down. Does he run into himself? I don't know. Maybe not. And that's what can make uh, them actually pretty important and pretty tricky. I've lost a bunch of games. I was in a tournament once, and I misread a ladder and ended up losing the whole game because of it, just because my position got so wrecked. So they're very important. All right, La next problem. The white stone is moved up, and there's not a white stone here anymore. Does the ladder work if white decides to play? Well, we see that starting to, and it doesn't look like it's going to run into the stone, or does it? Pause the video, try to read it out, then unpause. All right, so it actually turns out that this still doesn't work. Watch. White doesn't connect to the stone, but when black tries to keep this ladder going, because this stone, A, is here, he ends up atariing the stone by playing this ladder, which means that if black were to try to continue, white would just capture. And now that's an Atari on this stone. So if black was like, ha, well, you're still an Atari. White's like, nah, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> and that's Atariing that stone. And now there's no way to kill this white group and white can just like rip black apart. Theoretically, you could maybe try to use this ladder to just like surround territory this way, but pretty dangerous. Um, just all of these Ataris make it really difficult to hold on to all these points, and white's just going to rip whatever part you're trying to defend. Uh, but, so you see that even if white doesn't run into the stone, if he runs a little bit close, one space away, can still do it. So that makes ladders even more tricky, right? It's not even just like you can follow it down and be like, oh, he doesn't run into anything, I'm fine. He can't have any of his stones... Um, within one space. Otherwise, you'll self Atari. So those are sort of the dangers of ladders. And it's definitely good to practice uh, practice reading them. Maybe just set some ladder situations up for yourself and uh, try to uh, read them out in your head. Um, they can get pretty weird. Um, there's a lot of different kinds and different variations, but some ladders are pretty advanced, so I don't really want to touch those. Um, but just want to introduce you to the concept. All right, we're going to take it back to this position now. Um, actually, let's first uh, say, let's just throw a white stone there. Black to move. Is there a way to unconditionally capture A? Give it a pause and try to look at it. Okay, so if you've thought about it, we know uh, from our practice with ladders that this doesn't work because when white starts going and playing the ladder, he's gonna run into himself, which means that there's cutting points and white's alive and bad things, right? So the ladder doesn't work here, but there's another move that does. And that move is called the net. A net is when you play, uh, generally in a diagonal fashion, 
um, a one space away from a white stone or your enemy stone or a group of enemy stones that essentially block off every escape route such that if white tried to escape, you just stop him and net him. That's why it's called a net because it's you're netting the stones. They can't get through um, those holes there. And, you know, white can't pull it out because you can just threaten. So there's no way to save this white stone like that. So that's a very, very useful move. And whereas ladders um, need to be dependent on things across the board to capture, uh, this net is completely self-enclosed. It doesn't depend on anything happening anywhere else. If everything in the immediate vicinity is working out, you're good. Um, that doesn't mean that, you know, nets don't have their own uh, challenges. I'm going to run through a few ways where the net actually doesn't work and uh, show you things that you're going to going to want to try to watch out for. Um, but before we do that, we'll go through one more. How about this? What can black do right now to um, capture these stones? Turns out, uh, you can play a net. Black can't really turn, right? Because... Yeah. Yeah, come on. Just do what I want. Okay. Black can't really turn uh, because white will probably escape this way. And then black has some liberty problems. He's going to have to follow. Uh, white can keep going. then, you know, maybe make some shape this way. So turns out the net works here and you can do a net on two stones by playing like this. So we see that it's like making invisible lines, right? Uh, in between these black stones and there's nothing white can do. Notice that even if white tries to Atari, it doesn't matter because that last stone black played was an Atari and black can just capture the lot. So that's how a net would work on two stones. They're very, very powerful um, and very useful. Ladders and nets are one of the, are like the bread and butter of figuring out if it's okay to play a certain distance or how to kill off an enemy stone. So let's do one more net problem and then I'll show you guys how you can apply these. All right, uh, last problem, a little more complicated, but can black capture this stone in a net? Uh, see what the most likely spot is to play and pause the video or not. I don't care, I'm gonna tell you the answer right now. So it turns out the net actually doesn't work in this situation because there's white stones here that can totally mess up black's day. So if black tries to do that net trick that we were learning, right? White threatens to push through again. Black's like, okay, play the net, right? Unfortunately, though, pushing through here means that we're atariing the stone at the same time. And if Black tried to do this, then unfortunately it doesn't work. Um, white's shape is really bad, like really bad, but White will live. Um, the net unfortunately doesn't work in this situation because in trying to escape, white has two liberties left, black's netting stone only has one. So that's why it's these things seem easy at first, but they can be very, very difficult to um, read out and apply because they can pop up in a lot of situations. So that wraps up the basics of ladders and nets. Now I'm going to show you guys how to integrate that with the previous lecture. Um, and how players use the ideas of ladders and nets to figure out how far away they can play their stones. Maybe in, if you were watching the last video, you I told you, or you remembered, I told you, uh, that this small knight's move was cuttable. That was like a cuttable shape, right? But I said, you know, if it was close to the edge, it was okay. In some situations, it was okay. And then I vaguely said, if there were friends nearby, it's not okay. You might have been sort of confused what that meant. Um, now you won't be confused anymore because I'm going to tell you why it's okay uh, 
and why it's not okay in certain situations. The knight's move is very cool because if we think about how white would try to split these two stones, white would have to play here and here, right? Cut them off. White plays here, black naturally tries to connect, and then white cuts, and now black is split. But does this look a little familiar? This, this shape, these stones, right here? Kind of looks a little bit like the one move away from the net from the ladder that we just looked at, right? And so that's why the large, the small knight is a pretty strong shape because if white tries to cut those stones apart, black immediately has a ladder. And if the ladder is going to the edge of the board, there's no way white can cut these stones apart, even though he can start doing so. So we can see the ladder happening uh, in movement and well, that's why generally you don't see a player try and do this. And if a small knight is close to the edge, you really can't cut these apart. Um, even a large knight, right? Notice if white tries to cut this apart, and just to make it even easier, let's um, remove this stone. What does this shape look like? This looks like a net, right? If white defends this stone, black plays here and nets the cutting stones, captures the cutting stones. And that's why if white tries to split a small knight, if it doesn't have many other friends in the area, it's a little bit difficult. Because white has to save something. So if white pulls those stones out, black will simply capture these three stones. So no matter what white does, his two stones, A and B, are going to be in trouble because white ha or black has the net threat, <laughs> if you will. And so, so that is how these are sort of used uh, in real games. Um, that's why shapes and that's why, you know, the knight's move is strong and why the large knight is a little bit weaker um, just because it's a little bit further apart because when you try to connect them, you start creating the threats of ladders and creating the possibilities of nets. And the cutting stones that your opponent is trying to split you with a lot of times don't work the right way. So that is how ladders and nets work, and that is sort of how they can be used uh, to prove why some stone extensions are safe and others really aren't safe. So I hope uh, you learned a little bit about you know fighting and staying connected. Remember, this the whole theme these past few lessons have been about is staying connected and how that works and how you do that. Um, we learned these extensions and now you know why these extensions from your stones and how to move your stones, uh, why these shapes work and why they don't. It's because of the threats of the ladders and nets, which are the bread and butter of fighting um, when you get into close combat fighting. There can be a lot of variations that get very complicated um, if you're trying to cut stones apart. But just being aware that a ladder exists or a net exists and if it works or not can really keep you from making mistakes in your games. It can keep you from playing too far away. It can, if your opponent plays too far away, give you the confidence to cut him because you know that that ladder is going to work. So hope this uh, was an informative lesson. Uh, keep playing. Uh, keep learning from your games. I hope you're getting a lot of enjoyment out of learning this game. Um, it's really, really fun and I'm having a blast making these videos. So. I think next week we'll focus on li some life and death, uh, which is going to be one of the hardest ones to explain because it's not easy to figure rules out for those, but we're going to do our best. So stay tuned, uh, keep playing, and I'll see you on the grid.